Good morning, everyone. It's getting cold outside, so rather than freezing out there, though sometimes I just feel like bundling up. To, I'm doing this right here in my lovely room. <laughs> Ugh. So, chapter 12, part 5. Ugh, I'm all mixed up now. I should go back and do a little bit of rearranging on what I've done so far to snap. And uh, <laughs> I just, every morning, I kind of peruse, okay, what's going on in the world, this and that. And then I check some people's uh, Facebook page or or I'll go to YouTube and you know, see on what's going on with some of my favorite speakers. And it's the same thing I notice every time. It's like, ah... Uh, The hypocrisy in it all is uh, mind-boggling to me. So there was one where, okay, I'll give that as a one example, and then we're going to go to a reading from the Divine Principle today. Is uh, There was, a, a, okay, so the government wants to ban AR-15s, and if you don't know what they are, they're huge guns, they're huge guns where you have to hold both of the, you know, get anyway, and they give multiple shots. This It's a huge, big gun. Well, you know what we say about um, guys who are kind of, all right, and they drive a big old car or a big old fancy car, this or that, as a woman, <laughs> you kind of look at, oh, what are you compensating for? Well, I'm starting to say starting to kind of think the same way about it. So how big does it have to be and what are you compensating for? Okay. I mean, I've been in plenty of situations where I could have been blown away this and that. I have. And I had to step in and say, come on, guys. This, But I always did it with, well, if this is my time, my time has come to be shot huh, by someone who literally it was Come on now, this isn't a war, okay? We're not living here in a war, okay? I mean, criminals get in their own guns illegally through the black market and, and then go and rob people and shoot people and murder people. And I don't know, that, that's been going on forever and ever. Right? Now, suddenly everybody needs to have an AR-15. Are you kidding me? That's, that doesn't, well, there goes Sage saying, yeah, yeah donkey talk. Should people be allowed to defend themselves? Absolutely. I don't see no problem with that. But to go and start headbanging with people about a big old gun that you don't need to defend yourself is dumb. Well, but that's because the next thing they're going to do, well, okay. I see also there's people are aware of children are sexually abused all the time, all the time, as I said before, by family members more often than not. And yet, they're not in jail. They're not. They're hanging around out there. You never know. They try to, okay. But they're not. And why not? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's one of those things. So, what, you think that if you have a bigger gun that you can carry around, who the heck's going to walk around with an AR-15 all the time? Right? Why do you need to own a gun like that? Dear me, we got rifles. We got right there even longer than an air. <laughs> okay, <all right. coughs> I'm not getting it. I'm not getting the hypocrisy going on out there when it comes to. All right, you, you know why? You know why this hypocrisy is even possible? Because we have it so good in this country. We <laughs> really do. And uh, yeah, that there isn't some way to 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 just. It's almost like people need to be taught again to uh, live together uh, in a more peaceful manner. This uh, kind of go and find us. Okay, why did you do that? Uh, why did you? Uh, all right, so criminals don't care. They're not going to care regardless. Right? And uh, so now you, everybody feels, well, if I have that on my back, I'll tell you what. There's one thing that there are a lot of criminals out, criminals out there do not like, and that is a dog by your side, okay? 
A oh, couple of dogs. That's even, eh, yeah, we got easier prey than that. Right? Yes, see? Yeah. So how does one actually defend herself? Yeah? And then where does your trust yeah, in, okay, well, I'm here right now for a reason. <clears throat> and uh, well, if you have trust in God, then you're going to have to also let him decide, okay, well, she's going to be in that particular situation. Mm, if she has learned enough, if she has, if she's giving me the trust, what did Jesus say? Your faith healed you. Your faith saved you. It's like I said, yeah, okay, well, well, when you're talking about the AR-15s, this is not, you know, are you talking about people who, well, yeah, yeah, there is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. There are whole churches that's not out there, you know, who think that carrying around a gun is your salvation or something, okay? Not getting it. Oh, I'm getting it. Uh, all right, all right. But anywho, so let's get this. As I said, it's not about the AR-15. It's not about, um, you know, the left or the right or the... Uh, it, you know, when it, uh, the Republicans or the Democrats, it's the hypocrisy that's going on everywhere. Yeah? As I said, how many children are sexually abused it just within their family? All I can tell you is, and this is the bottom line for me, if men did not want it, it would not exist. So guess what? Men are the ones who will have to fix this problem. Men are the ones who will have to change. Yeah? Or teach. Or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, interesting. Yeah, you spend all that time worrying about guns, you know, which ones you can carry and which ones you can't, blah, 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 blah. But yet, when a child is involved again, yeah, blind eye, cover it up, this, that, and just a poster, this, that's not going to do no good. Yeah. While you have a different agenda going on at the same time, too. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> The foundation, restoration, the foundation for the Messiah. The Messiah comes as the true parent of humanity because only he can remove the original sin by giving the rebirth to humanity, born of fallen parents. Aha. Uh -huh. For fallen people to be restored to their original state, we must receive the Messiah. Before we can receive the Messiah, however, we must first establish the foundation for the Messiah. God worked for 2,000 years before Jesus was born. And yet still people decided that, oh, that had to be a virgin birth. Oh, that had, that was that was Zachariah. This, now, that's a one, one uh, group that believes that, you know, that he was actually the father of Jesus. And even though he was already married, that means that he was committing adultery. And when were the Ten Commandments put in place? Moses' time. Well, that was way before Zachariah. Okay. But there is in Matthew, yeah, the first book, in the New Testament, shows the lineage that God carefully prepared for Jesus to be born. And at the end, it says, right at the end, it says, Joseph, Joseph was the last one of that lineage, the husband of Mary. Oh, oh. And why would God, with, with the intricate, beautiful way that he created everything and made everything work on how we procreate this now, suddenly be not good enough for his own son. He prepared for 2,000 years. That's the foundation to receive the Messiah. And yet, people decided for one reason or another to make it this big old mystical thing that then, well, that's kind of hard to believe. Yeah, that is kind of hard to believe, isn't it? But if you really go in, we're going to check, yeah? How many people actually read the whole thing in Matthew, right? chapter 1? You go through and you go, oh, what does it say at the end? And I went and checked out many different Bibles and always says the same thing. Joseph, the husband of Mary, is the last one of that lineage that our Father in Heaven prepared. Prepared that lineage. For Jesus to be born as a sinless child. As the Messiah. Yeah. Interesting? I find that interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's read a little bit more. 
So the truth, right? Gosh, we all got a brain out there. I don't get it, but people are so stupid. Do not say, hey, wait a minute. Wow. Okay. And again, yeah, in a way, it is a comfort to everyone out there that has children. For every woman that <laughs> you know, bears a child yeah, in agony, this and that. Well, so did Mary. No doubt the child, though, was received, was conceived in love. And we decided somehow over 2,000 years, and however people wanted to see it at that time, well, aha, carnal lust. Well, there you go again. Even at that time, somehow, the act of love was a dirty thing, regardless. Not good enough for Jesus to be received, conceived in love, through the Holy Spirit as well, while those two had a conjugal relationship, Joseph and Mary, no, then they had to make this fantasy thing out of it. If that wasn't good enough. Do you see? Where has our understanding gone when it comes to a conjugal relationship between a man and a woman and what it creates and what a beautiful thing that is? Yeah, interesting? Yeah. All right. Okay. What indemnity conditions are required for establishing the foundation for the Messiah? To answer this question, we must first understand how Adam was to have realized the purpose of creation and how he failed to do it. Because the condition of indemnity is made by reversing the course of the deviation from the original path. Right there. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Well, what happened in the Garden of Eden is that Adam had a conjugal relationship with Eve. I'm not going to go into the snake thing. And and uh, they were not ready. They, they were not ready to do that. They had they, they weren't fully grown uh, uh, in, the, in their uh, growth and formation period, per se, where then God could be a part of their union as well, the Holy Ghost. It says, that's what was missing. That's what was present when Jesus was conceived. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. All the preparation that God did afterwards. And also kind of explains, oh, so way back in the beginning of Adam and Eve, in Genesis, this and that, the, the, uh, uh, already uh, the impurity of the act that those two had with each other, uh, not with the consent, consent of God, started it all. And to this day, uh, to this day, it is like that. The perversion of the act of love has just escalated. And more people are so used to it, yeah, you know, just turn your, well, as long as it's not happening in my family, and it's happening in every family. In every family, it happens. In every family, that happens. And there's probably a reason for that. So that is the main thing that God has been trying to restore. Yeah, well, anyway, let's keep going. For Adam to realize the purpose of creation, he was supposed to fulfill two conditions. First, Adam should have established a foundation of faith. The, okay, there you go. The person to lay this foundation was Adam himself. The condition to establish this foundation was to keep strictly to God's commandment not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In fulfilling this condition, Adam would have passed through a set growing period, which was the time allotted for him to fulfill his portion of responsibility. This period represents some numbers of providential significance. Hence, the growing period may be thought of as a period to fulfill certain numbers as well. Age, that's where age comes in, right? Where does, does really, in, at that time, any kind of numbers come in? Age. It's age. At what age are you ready? to take responsibility to raise a family, to care for a child, right? So here's the thing. Huh? How is that? How is carrying a gun around with you, which then you absolutely, you put, you put your trust into what? A weapon? A firearm weapon? That's what you want to do? That is your goal in life? And then fight for a tooth and nail. If I were to see men out there fighting tooth and nail for every child out there 
that is being sexually abused and harassed, I get, I'll go, okay, all right. That or at least is a balance. But there isn't. Tooth and nail, you're fighting for that Second Amendment because you, me, 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 me. Where are you when, when a girl, a little girl, is being sexually abused in your own family and you're not doing anything about it? Shovel it under the rug. Ooh, that's not a good thing. Hmm? That's, there's not one family that I know where that has not happened multiple times to multiple girls and sometimes boys. Huh? Yes? And yet, as I said, that hypocritical stance for uh, the rights of adults and where is the care for the children? Where is it? Where is it? And then often when there's actually something in place where children are being taken away from parents who are abusive, are neglective, yeah, then uh, they're getting attacked. They're getting attacked. They're getting attacked for the job that they're doing. Sometimes a very difficult job to have to separate the parents from the children or the children from the parents. Yeah, yeah. weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird and it's completely off balance. So, yeah, so my, my thing on, on this whole thing is with guns and the Second Amendment, if I do not see you fight for the rights of children as you fight for your own right to carry a weapon, for what? In here? You're not in a war. Who's the enemy out there? <laughs> your own countrymen? You can't just... You, you're not secure enough in your own being and have faith, have that foundation of faith where you know, well, I'm being put here for a reason. I'm, I'm going to have to figure out how to work this out right? with compromise or talking and this and that, instead of a gun. Well, there are certain places you just don't go to because you already know now you're putting yourself in danger. You know that. What is that? A nightclub, for example. <laughs> A dark alley is another one. Certain places in a city where you just, just shouldn't go, right? Because people out there are fighting it out. They're so completely confused and off balance. This, nah, they're just, nah, let them fight it out between each other. They're going to have the guns regardless. Why do you need to be, why do you need a gun? Because you want to be in places where that is necessary? Oh, gotcha. Okay, well, just saying. Just saying. Yeah. People are so busy out there. You have to be so busy. Spend more time at home with your family, with your children. Yeah. In your garden, this, that. You have to be so busy. Again, yeah. we make our own choices when it comes to certain things. And uh, as I said, yeah, where are the priorities in all those choices? Thou shalt not kill. I don't care how people say it. That's, well, that that's murder. That's not to defend yourself. This, that. Okay. All right. You feel better now? All right. Good. <laughs> As I said, you're going to go to spirit world. You're still going to have to be. You will be. You will hold yourself responsible for any life that you took. That is why so many veterans, so many soldiers come home with PTSD. It's just there. It's, there. it's somewhere in their subconscious. They know. But yet, because of the way we view so many things differently than according to God's view, yeah, the consequences are physical and psychological and mental illness. There you go. I believe it or not. <laughs> All right, last part of this. The second condition which Adam was supposed to fulfill in order to realize the purpose of creation was to establish the foundation of substance. After Adam established an unshakable foundation of faith, he was then to become one with God, thereby establishing the foundation of substance. This means he would have become the perfect incarnation of the word. With perfect character fulfilling God's first blessing, in this way he had not fallen. Adam would have completed, in this way, had he not fallen, Adam would have completed the purpose of creation, which is what? To bring God joy. 
For a fallen person to establish the, the foundation for the Messiah, he must pass through a similar course, establishing first the foundation of faith and then the foundation of substance. So, to go back to a foundation of faith, you will never abuse a child. You will be ready to be a parent, a mother or a father, especially for men, especially for men. Look how far degraded manhood has become in so many areas, so many of them. Hmm? And then the foundation of substance. The foundation of substance then yeah, solidifies your physical, huh? yeah. your physical nature, your physical um, being. Paul okay. Says the church of Christ is across the street. All right, I'm going to finish this up with this because I'm not alone and there's talking going on here. All right, so here we go. Yeah. So if you're so gung ho with your guns, then uh, what the first thing that I would like to see is in a man, okay, is to, uh, you're going to have to start protecting the children out there in this world better. You have to protect your women better. Okay? And that's not done with a gun. That is done with your conscience knowing what the right thing is to do when it comes to loving your family, loving your child, loving your wife and loving your, cha uh, your, your, uh, your family. Okay? And that is you 100% will never turn your back on a child that you full well know has been sexually abused, is being sexually abused, and now you're covering for that man. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because, hey, we're strong. Us women, we're strong. We can get over it. Right? You don't ever get over an experience like that. You just don't. And uh, you, you, uh, you uh, keep on going. Right? You keep on, you know, but you never you never get over it, okay? So, and then on top of that, how often is a, a girl or a woman not believed that, well, this is what happened, okay? So there is all the confusion going on, yes? And then there are some women out there who abuse that. That's the worst. That is the worst thing. Okay? That's the betrayal right there of Eve okay? in the Garden of Eden. The worst betrayal that you do to your own kind per se to another woman then who is not going to be believed right yeah. when you lie about things like that well anyway that's all i wanted to share today uh, i'd like to see the hypocrisy of uh, the second amendment and we want to own our ar-15s and this and that and i don't know what else you know and then uh, and and uh, you know it, it's it's weird on how any person can put so much emphasis on a thing. It's a dead thing unless you pick it up and care so little for a living thing, a child who's being abused. Yeah, we see the post, the snap, but really when it comes down to it, there is a few people out there who are doing something about it. Yeah. yeah. There are organizations, uh, uh, government organizations, who have, you know, go after uh, a few plants of marijuana. That's more important than trying to find a child that's been abducted. Yeah. Well, just say, <laughs> right there, again, a thing, a plant, okay? uh, which is a living thing, too. Doesn't, <laughs> all right, right? Yeah. Anywho, okay. Well, that's all I wanted to share today. Uh... I feel like as a woman, all I can do is just communicate. Hey, guys, you're failing. You're failing big time out there. And you want to be the big gun out there yeah? as a subject, man, as a subject, yeah? the head of the household. This and that. Well, then do your job better than what you're doing. And the number one thing, yeah, if men did not want it, it would not exist. Right? That's how I see it. Just as if there were a war, nobody would show up. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. God's love and blessing always. And I will talk to you another time. That's the object. That's the best I can do. Right? Yes.
that's the best I can do. So, keep you informed, keep you alert. Foundation of faith and substance.